The Baltic Sea is brackish water, mainly fed by various rivers and has its only saltwater influx from the North Sea. More than 80 million residents live in its catchment area. Intensive agricultural use, linked with the use of fertilizers, leads to high nutrient loads to the Baltic Sea, causing excessive eutrophication with algae blooms and increased risk of local oxygen depletion. Changes of agricultural techniques and the reduction of nutrient inputs by, for example, requirement of catch crops in spring or wetland restoration are the main aim to improve the water quality in rivers and the Baltic Sea, but also locally in coastal waters. Additionally, to source-related land-based measures, mussel farming is a promising measure to further remove nutrients out of the sea. Several trails have been conducted in the Baltic Sea to test locations, farming techniques and mussel growth. The Danish Shellfish Center, located at the Limfjorn, has long-term experiences in mussel farming. It focuses on applied science for sustainable shellfish production and deals with ecological issues of coastal waters. The research farm in Limfjorn is a mixed-use farm mostly based on the production of mussels for human consumption, but also to test measures and techniques for mitigation purposes. The farm has, with 18 hectares, the typical size of a mussel farm. There are important differences between mussel farms for human consumption and for mitigation purposes. The farm we're, we're currently at is a mixed-use farm, so it's mostly based on the production of mussels for human consumption and research based around different methods to produce mussels for human consumption, but also to test methods for producing mussels and for mitigation purposes. The farm we have at the Shelfer Center is, uh, is all long lines, so this is a conventional type of uh, cultivation method where we use smaller buoys and, uh, and a high tension rope. On a smart farm, it's, uh, it's, that's a brand, so it's, uh, it's, it's just a, a big black plastic tube that's full of air and a net hangs below it and it's used to collect as much spat as possible in a given area. So yeah, the mussels are the same species, but the, the way that they grow is based on how much food they can consume as a group. And, and in a human consumption farm, you want to give the individual mussel itself the best conditions. In the mitigation farm, you want to give all of the mussels the same conditions. So what that equates to is a higher group biomass instead of an individual mass. Mitigation mussels will reduce the amount of nutrients in the water by removing microscopic algae, so-called phytoplankton. Nutrients are transported in the marine environment. They go into the phytoplankton and the mussels consume a large portion of it. For every ton of harvested mussels, 14 kilograms of nitrogen and 1 kilogram of phosphorus can be removed out of the water. In the Skive Fjord, the southern part of the Limfjorn, mussel farms have been present for years. For Jens Peter Hedebank, a local politician, there is need for improving the water quality, especially for the needs of coastal users. Ja, vandet omkring uh, Skive og, og, og Limfjords område er utrolig vigtigt, også uh, både for turismen, men også for uh, uh, erhvervet. Der er kommet næringsstoffer ud i vandet uh, fra mange forskellige steder, men primært for landbruget. Og, og så samtidig har vi jo en stigende hvad det, vandtemperatur og ja, omkring uh, muslingekompensationsopret. Det, det, er en, det er en rigtig spændende ny ting, som vi synes uh, fra politisk side, at det er noget, vi skal, der skal arbejdes videre med. Mitigation muscle farming can also stimulate the local economy, especially when it comes to local processing. For example, to fish feed. I kombinationsopret så er det arbejdspladser jo, og arbejdspladser sammen med en, uh, en bedre uh, det, vandkvalitet ude i fjorden, det er der kun en win-win for alle jo. From environmental point of view, mitigation mussel farming has also potential negative impacts to some coastal waters. The negative effects is basically that uh, when you have such huge compilations of mussels living in one place on ropes, 
they filter out all of these particles uh, from the water column. But uh, as a general rule, one third of what they filter out of a water column ends up as sludge at the bottom uh, of the coastal area. And uh, this sludge actually demands quite a lot of oxygen in order to, to, be, uh, to be mineralized. Uh, and that uh, adds to the problems that you have in many Danish fjords. The effects of mitigation mussel farming on water quality depend especially on the local conditions and need to be taken into consideration when new sites are planned. I think mussel farming on ropes uh, and cultures could be used in other places in the Limfjord as well. But you have to be very careful where you place them because you need to place them in areas where there are good currents. Otherwise, this huge amounts of sludge coming from, from high densities of mussels will create problems uh, either directly under the mussel culture or in vulnerable areas uh, nearby. Learning from the experiences in Limfjorn the mussel mitigation concept is transferred to other coastal sites in the Baltic Sea. In the frame of research projects, it is currently being analyzed how effective blue mussels can be in the low saline waters. But at least for Denmark, researchers are confident in the potential. The future of mussel mitigation farming requires a bit more research in order to further optimize production in different environments. The potential of, of mitigation farming in, uh, in the Baltic can be quite high in areas like Denmark, for example, with high nutrient loads, a lot of coastline and national waters. Innovative tools such as mussel farming can help to improve the water quality of the Baltic Sea and will influence future prospects of new generations.